Hello everyone, it's Liliana from Vanilla and Canela here. Welcome back to my channel, to another video and to Vlogtober. So in today's video, I want to share with you a box full of treasures. Now, unfortunately this summer, Paul's grandmother passed away very unexpectedly. She led a full life, her name was Barbara. She was a magnificent mother and grandmother and she is sorely, sorely missed by everyone. And she left a house full of treasure, full of treasure. I cannot tell you how many beautiful things she had. And we were allowed to go in and pick whatever we wanted to keep as memories or things that we liked. And that's exactly what we did and I'm so happy to have these items forever and to pass on to Alex so Alex can pass them on to his children so let me show you what I have so we picked up a load of books she had a massive collection of books and we pick, I picked them up not because they're worth something I have no idea about that but because I liked the way they looked and I thought they were cute and yeah so let me just show you what I got. The very first book I got is this one. It says, Further Doings of Millie Molly Mandy by Joyce Lancaster Bris Brisley. I just thought this was so, so sweet. The spine is completely, you know, the, the bit that goes here on the spine is off, but it doesn't matter. Let me just show you how precious this is this is the the village that this little girl in the story lived in and it could not be a more traditional british village look at the little cottages so adorable the and it seems to be so quite look there is look, the illustrations are just the cutest thing in the whole world um, it doesn't say, yeah, no, I can't see the date where it was, when it was made, not that it matters, but yeah. Oh, here we go. First published in May 1932, and I think this is the January 1940 edition. So it was obviously popular enough. I mean, look at that i am so looking forward to reading this and maybe reading it to alex i think it's like kids stories i just thought that was so adorable paul picked up this gardener's handbook and again you can see by the state of it and it says on there cedric we don't know who that is now whether or not paul's grandma picked this up from charity shop or anything like that by the way caveat here alex is home paul's home and ethel's home so if you hear them in the background you know how it goes but it's a little book like so again by london country life limited and it does actually say on here kent education committee County Library Class 635. Um, it's just a cute little book. Yeah. First published in 1936. So that's just, you guys know I like old books and Paul does too. So we thought that was really sweet. Um, I also ooh, picked up this one. It's called Tales of an Old Yew Tree by Hugh Lawrence. Um, and again, it's um, very, very old, very fragile, but has beautiful pictures. It looks to be some religious at start, at points, you know. But again, we have not had a chance to read it or anything like that. But I just loved the cover. And yeah. This is what it looks like. I also spotted this one and I just thought it was the dearest little book that you'll ever see. The Language of Flowers. And it actually tells you inside 
what flowers you should give for what occasion. So, um, or what flowers mean, if, if that makes sense. So if you give uh, clovers, white clovers, you're wanting someone to think of you. Um, there's all different and with lovely little illustrations. Excuse me a minute while I let Ethel out. Come on then. Do you want to go out? Come on. She doesn't want to go out. She just wants to be heard. You know what she's like. So yes. So adorable. I'm trying really hard not to make this video too long. But even got a little dedication in there um, so it looks like most likely this was picked up from either a charity shop or something like that look at the illustrations are just the most adorable the tiniest little book look. so also still with the books what's this one about the, oh yes, so this book actually belonged to Paul's dad, who's also called Paul. So it is the school book, schoolboy's pocket book. Paul says it's really cute, and he wished he'd had it when he was growing up. So it gives you just information about look the Earth and the Moon, all those little things. And I think the the main reason why Paul picked it up was because it belonged to his dad when he was a young boy. So, that. And then, this is for me the best of it all. It's called The Longfellow's Birthday Book. And in here, it has, don't want to show you because it's family stuff, but it has birthdays and also death dates of family members going back to 1889. Um, it has tiny little clips from newspapers in, let's say, in memory of, so of when people died, um, this family member actually cut out little remembrance things. And it has as well little verses. O oh, pure in heart, from thy sweet dust shall grow. So this for me is probably the most precious because it actually contains information about Paul's side of the family and it is the sweetest little book. Last book I think, yes last book again. This is a children's book and we got it because it belonged to Paul's dad and it was given to him by his sister in let me show you oh, so it was given to Paul's dad from his sister Sally in Christmas 1956 oh, let me show you there so we just thought we have to have that and read it to Alex and hopefully pass it on to Alex's children it's like little kids tales so so sweet we also found that Paul's grandmother had kept a little announcement. This is Paul here when he was a boy. Uh, he won um, a painting, a drawing. Was it a drawing, babe? Uh, it was pictures, yeah, drawing. So he won a competition and got to meet um, a celebrity. And that is him right there. That is Paul. So we found that. What else? I also picked up this. I think it's a creamer, a cream jar. So just in glass. I really like that. And I found this. Say hi, Paul. Hello. <laughs> and look, it's like this brassy colour. It has initials E A J. 
So we don't think this is this is not anyone's initials in our family. So we think maybe Paul Paul's grandmother picked this up, um, whether from a charity shop or from an auction place. And it is, wait for it, you guys. A handbag. It's like the cutest little handbag. It's not in the best condition. I don't intend to use it, but I just thought that was such a such a little darling little thing. So I got that as well. So I also got this rolling pin. I really liked. I have no idea who it's by. There's no brand. Uh, just says made in England. I don't see a brand anywhere, but I liked, I thought it was quite mid-century modern style and I really liked the pattern and so I got that as well. And then I got these little birds. They have an, on the back a little, can you see that? So it's to stick on the wall. I thought these were really cute. I think these, this big one is actually broken at the tips, but the others are not. You see, there's two, three, four. What I'll do, if you, if you want to see them in more detail, right at the end, after I say goodbye, I'll put some footage where I film it close so you can see. So I got those and then within that bird theme I found this little collection. Let me show you. They are little wall hangings. Now this is not usually my thing but I thought they were just so cute and gorgeous and I intend to put them up by where my plant area is. You guys know what I mean? So there's this one this one this one here and then there's some little is that a mouse Paul is that a mouse or is that a, a vole what do you think there's this one it's a field mouse field mouse maybe so. and finally this one as well I also saw, this was one of the first things I saw and I loved. It is not in the best condition. So you can see this should be sticking out, but I love the pattern. I take it, this is a perfume bottle. I don't intend to use it as such. This opens, look at that. But I thought the pattern was just so, so gorgeous. Everything needs a really good clean. Um, but yeah, we also got this, Paul's mum and dad had this that they got from uh, Paul's grandmother's house. This is a photo of Paul's mum and dad and Paul when he was a little, little toddler there. And we actually took a photo that same area. It looks slightly different now, yesterday, so we could have both. I think that's a gorgeous photo. And then I found these two tins. The other one is exactly the same. It it has got a lock but no key. And inside there's a little plaque that I'm not going to show you because it actually contains Paul's family um, business name. And so we think it's part of the family, but there you go. So we think they used to use that to stamp something like that. But I quite liked the little metal tins. Again, they need a good clean. I thought they would look nice somewhere. And then there was another one. Here you go. Slightly different. I don't know if these were really traditional of the time, but actually says Ford on them. And inside, there's little cards, and I think this is based. Well, I don't think I know. It's a weekly repayment of the Ford car. 
so they were paying like 35 pounds a week so i thought again that was really sweet and then finally i got this this is nothing particularly special it's just a candle but i smelt it and it smelled really nice so i thought i'll make use of that because i love candles but it has this beautiful summery spring print on it and that is everything we got from um our family but also i forgot to show you yesterday when i showed you all the stuff we got in the charity shops i forgot to show you this one item that was really the the jewel of it all i'm going to show it to you i'm going to turn the camera and show you what it looks like so paul spotted this box in a charity shop and pointed it out to me and i said straight away i don't care what's in it i love it so we're getting it it had no price on it but the guy at the till said we could have it for eight pounds and basically they're blocks building blocks stone building Okay, it's by Richter's Anchor Blocks. We had a look online. There's many different for sale at different prices. This is not in a particular, particularly good condition. But basically, so the top is slightly broken. There you go. They're tiny little, they're, this box is so, so heavy. But basically, this is what Lego used to be like. Let me take the rest off. I'm going to take, take this top tray off. You just lift this, but you need two hands to do so. Let me show you what's underneath. So these are the plans, or to give you idea of what you could build with them. Look. We just thought this was the sweetest Thing. and I know we're probably going to put this somewhere in the house just display it in its box and I bet you anything that anyone that would walk into the, ha the house and spots that box that box is going to ask us what's inside I just think it's amazing it's just beautiful it's from 1914 look March 1914 and to me, that's a piece of history. That's Legos before they were Legos. Paul actually wants to play with it for a little bit, and sort of maybe build something for Christmas, maybe a barn, some sort of building. We are just in love with it. Tell me what you think about it. That is it for all the treasures I had to share with you today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I will treasure forever all these little memories that we got from Paul's grandmother, she was, like I said before, an amazing woman and we miss her dearly and I'm going to say goodbye now. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more Vlogtober. Stay to the end if you want to see these little items up close and personal. Bye for now. Careful.
不起。